Lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, the United States, and throughout the world. You're watching L'Oreal TV. First of all, we have to understand the word phagos in Greek, gluttonous eating, eating beyond capacity, eating beyond capacity, phagos. To understand phagos, it's better to go to the Old Testament. Their God is their stomach. Their God is their stomach. I agree this is a major problem among many Christians. We don't get drunk anymore. We don't take drugs anymore. We don't fornicate anymore. But eating is not a sin. So that's the one pleasure left, except that there's a propensity in the Western world to do it to excess. I'm not a one to talk. Take a look at my weight. I'll explain it, but take a look. I used to be thin. I used to be thin. Now I'm a half a rhinoceros. Well, there are different kinds of obesity. We always have to be careful. There's dietary obesity, there's glandular obesity, and there is lymphatic obesity. The overwhelming mass of obesity is diet-related in the Western world, dietary obesity. Some people tend to have large bones, tend to be heavier anyway due to genetic predisposition, but when you're talking about serious obesity in the developed world, it is usually dietary-related but not all. I know a pastor's wife, the pastor's now gone to be with the Lord in the United States. Um, she's actually uh, a very nice person, but she suffered a postpartum glandular disorder after having a baby. She has a leptin deficiency. Her body does not make leptin. She suffers glandular obesity. She was a skinny little lady. I mean, she was not in any sense overweight. But after one of her pregnancies, she developed this glandular condition. And she is the Goodyear blimp. It is extremely taxing to her health. She's had operations and so forth. But it's nothing to do with diet. No amount of diet or dieting is going to cure what's wrong with her. She suffers from glandular obesity. We must be careful. When you see an extremely obese person, their problem may not be dietary. It may be glandular. Do not assume the sin of gluttony. In my own case, prior to my accident, I was a rather thin person. After my accident, I began gaining weight. What we did not know until I nearly died in 2015 of cellulitis and liver and kidney failure caused by the cellulitis was that I have what's known as lymphatic edema, lymphatic edema, caused by atrial fibrillation, caused by a heart condition and circulatory deficiency into my lower extremities and gut and other places. What you see under my eyes, this is not fat, this is fluid. What's in my ankles, in my feet, I was just pumping the fluid out of my legs yesterday. I have compression pumps that I actually have to pump the fluid to get my legs mobilized. What's in my legs, what's in my lower abdomen, in my ankles and feet is a, a protein concentrated uh, or pro protein saturated interstitial fluid in the lymphatic tissue. It's called lymphoedema, lymphatic edema. I was in hospital for seven weeks, hardly eating anything. My weight went down a bit, but it didn't cure it. Now, overeating would make my condition worse, 
but not eating at all wouldn't make it any better. My weight is not fat. My weight is not diet related. My weight is from lymphoedema. It's not fat. It is protein soaked fluid that predisposes me to cellulitic infection. The lymphatic vascular system or lymphatic vascular structures in my legs and lower gut are all obstructed and clogged due to lymphoedema. Nothing to do with, with eating. I've stopped eating nearly entirely. I stopped eating so much when I was hospitalized that I began experiencing muscular atrophy. There was almost no fat for my body to catabolize. It began digesting the muscle tissue. That's how little I ate. All the fat was gone, yet I was still puffed because of the lymphatic fluid. That's just the way it is. So you have most obesity is diet related. Some is glandular, some is lymphatic. I unfortunately suffer lymphatic. I assure you, I don't eat four pizza pies every night or, or, or six milkshakes in the, in, in the middle of the day. It, it, it's not that. Um, it's not that I have a, some kind of a gluttonous lifestyle. I've stopped eating completely and it still doesn't do any good. There's no cure unless the Lord intervenes. I manage the symptoms with drugs, um, but that's about all I can do. Yes, overeating would make it worse, but not, e not eating at all isn't going to cure it. Uh, that's my own condition. Yet, let's be honest, in the United States, in Great Britain, in Australia, in South Africa, New Zealand, it's very easy to eat too much. Very easy. Very easy. Uh, we should be that hungry spiritually for the Word of God as we are for barbecues. Nonetheless, there is a sin of gluttony. And in most cases, uh, overweight is related to eating and to some degree can involve the sin of gluttony. I'm not saying in every case, but I'm saying many Christians need to eat less. As Billy Graham once pointed out, too many Christians are digging their own grave with their knife and fork. He's unfortunately right. Thank you for the question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings of Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church, Shadows of the Beast, the second book, 
And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo. What the scripture actually teaches about the rapture. The snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blood of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.